people that are mad enthusiastic photographers put your hands up okay hands up all those people that are just sort of starting off and just taking the odd snap and wanting to improve what they're doing does size matter in photography yes well this is mine I've got a big one, <laughs> and I'm proud of it, it does some nice stuff, but I've also got a little one, and my little one's going to be pretty much the same as everybody's got in here probably, so instantly size doesn't really matter, it's what you do with it. <laughs> I'm talking about the photography. <laughs> I'm sorry. When you've had a quick look at those, four megapixels, like I said, I defy anybody to say, oh, yeah, you can see instantly that's taken on a little camera. The quality of that is superb. Now, it's obviously the conditions you take it under, and it's how you take the pictures. Very simple guidelines as we go along. It's still up to that quality. How many of you, put your hands up, how many of you get home, look at your pictures and find things in your pictures that you didn't know were there? Yeah. Come on, put your hands up. Most of you, right. Yeah. And you know why it is, it's really simple. We get off a ship, we get on a bus, we go to a location, we come flying out, we're in, well this is the Swiss Alps, beautiful. You get out there and you go, wow, look at that. And you go, click, 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 click back on the coach and you're off, <laughs> don't you, you do, that's what you do, that's a tour. Now, your vision, your peripheral vision should stretch from there, if you look forward you should see your hands, unless you've got problems with your eyes, so your vision's a panoramic right across there isn't it, your camera isn't. Unless, unless it's sort of set on a specific panoramic view, it's got a single picture, a single area. Yes, you've got wide, you've got telephoto, but it's nothing like panoramic. And that's what's going to happen if you just go out and just take pictures. You've got to learn to see. There's a duck down here, look, it ruined my picture. Oh. <laughs> well, actually, no, actually, there's nothing wrong with this picture at all. It's a trick. I mean, it's, if you don't like the picture, then there's something wrong in your mind. But technically, there's nothing wrong with the picture. Yes, the duck would have been nice if he was floating around there. But no matter how much I threw stones at him, he wouldn't go back. I'm kidding. Now, what I'm going to suggest here, that once you've got the first picture, and it only takes a few seconds, think about the second one. Is a better picture, yes? Don't stand in front of it like that and go click. What will happen it looks great on this little monitor. It won't be sharp when you get home. At this point, you've got two options. One is a tripod. Who carries a tripod? Well done, sir. 
I no longer carry one, they're too heavy. <laughs> you don't need one, but you deserve a round of applause just for carrying it. <laughs> There's always a tripod somewhere. There's one right there, look at that. If that was my camera, that's a tripod. There's a wall. There's always a wall somewhere. There's a wall there in that picture. Look, there's a wall. That's a tripod. This is one trick that not many people actually use. But to take your picture, if that was a, a telegraph pole or a lighting pole or any kind of wall, if you actually push your camera against it and squeeze the trigger into it, it doesn't move. Most people go like this, trying to steady themselves. It's the camera you steady. Push it into there, you get a perfectly still picture. Thank you.